Version 12 is out and it's going pretty wide, but just like version 11, the biggest question is, will it actually work where I live, where the small towns are, where the no towns are? That's the big question. And so I am joined today by two, not one, but two of my fellow small town uh, version 12 uh, beta human testers to discuss it. Uh, I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. Oh, 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 oh. So I've got a couple folks here who might know what's going on, uh, at least from their experience. We've got uh, Brian Reby, Drives Electric. Uh, he puts out a whole bunch of his own pretty good content. Uh, his video production quality is crazy. I don't know who this gentleman is here, uh, but he looks an awful lot like, uh, yeah, Iowa Tesla guy. Oh yeah, that's you. Okay, great. So I've got the right people in the right place for this conversation. That's going to be helpful. So thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I love you guys. You know that. So, uh, <laughs> version 12 is rolling out. So, uh, I'm on 12.3.2.1. Uh, Brian, what are you on? 12.3. And Jim? I have one car on 12.3 and one car on 12.3.3. <laughs> so we've got all the, <laughs> we've got quite a collection here. We've got, Quite a few different variations. So my first question would be, and we'll start with you, Jim, is what were some frustrations you had with version 11 that you wanted to see it overcome? Um, lane changes that just happened randomly um, and sometimes and dangerously. And uh, that seems to have been completely fixed. Also roundabouts. We have a lot of roundabouts where I live here in Iowa. Surprise, we have roundabouts in Iowa. Um, and roundabouts were just don't even bother with FSD, just take it out, drive the roundabout and go. And I'm happy to report that I am shocked how well roundabouts work with version 12. So for me, those were the two major things and motorcycles for me, I don't know, just FSD around motorcycles coming and going, just freaked it out. And, um, it seems to be okay with motorcycles now. Brian, what's been your frustration with version 11? My biggest one was it wanting to dive into turn lanes when a new turn lane opened up. If there weren't those kind of white dots to you know, differentiate it, it would just decide, oh, that's a new lane. I should go to the right lane and jump in there. Not every time, but enough to make it pretty squirrely to use. And I hadn't had that problem prior to version 11. So people would complain about that. I'm like, it's overblown. That's hardly ever happened to me. Version 11, it was a lot. And so that was my, my daughter actually in the back of the car would laugh every time I would report it because I'd report it the same way. And it just <laughs> became a game to her that, you know, do do jumping into a turn lane instead of staying straight on our route. And then she'd giggle. So maybe the, the software people heard a lot of giggling in the background. That was a big frustration. I assume it's all voice parsed and then filtered and sorted because my reports were more along the lines of if you're trying to kill all humans, this is a great way to go about it. Uh, I did see. So last week I published a video doing a side by side test of the same route twice on V11 and 12, two different model Ys. And it did exactly what you described where it would try and get into that. In, in my case, a bus stop. No, nope, mm -hmm. no, nope, oh, don't, yep. don't do that. Uh, but on version 12, I haven't seen anything like that on roundabouts. My city has. Is it a roundabout? It's the town square. So it's okay. got something like 12 or 15 on and off ramps. It's a mess. Mm. Uh, and today I drove through it three times from three directions and not once did it hesitate. Not once it, at one point it changed lanes getting into it because there was two lanes feeding into it. And I thought, what do you do? Oh, right. That lane's going to become an exit only before. Okay. Yep. That's the right answer. So I was plenty impressed. Uh, so those are some frustrations in version 11. I'd say uh, my biggest ones were, it just didn't work in my town. You know, there were, there's a lot of goofy little old roads. This is an old mill town that, that has been here for, well, this half of the town is new. It's only a hundred years old, but the other half is a little bit older, uh, but the roads are small and weird and not very well thought out. The city planner was trying to make the city feel bigger by intentionally introducing inconveniences. He cut a, a little artificial lake and then platted half the city off of that and the other half not out. It's just, a, you get some goofy stuff and it didn't mm -hmm. do well. 
So uh, on version 12, so those were the problems we had with version 11. Oh, on a, so on a, on a scale, let's give it a A to F scale, A plus to F scale. Version 11, where you live, what kind of grade would you have given it? Before having used version 12, I would have given it a B plus. Now, after I've used version 12, I think the grade should have been a lot lower. Mm -hmm. Brian? I would say C because of all those, you know, lane shift issues. Yeah. So for me, it would have been a D, D minus because it was bad enough that in town, I just wouldn't use it. In one demo I did, I'd pulled up to a stoplight and without exaggeration, it would go two blinks left, one blink right, two blinks left, one blink right. Hey guys, where are we going? What's our plan here? Uh, and I don't, I did not have an answer to that question. So I would say, yeah, there was some, some difficulties there. Uh, now that you're on 12, does it work? I mean, we'll start with you, Brian. Does, does, does it work? I would say I haven't used it enough to give it like an A plus, but I would say it's solid B plus to A uh, from just the level of disengagements, the roundabouts I've used. Um, it was shockingly good the first time um, going in. It had to wait for traffic and in version 11, it would creep, but maybe creep in an uncomfortable way for that oncoming traffic where this just got itself right in the right human position where oncoming traffic knew I was in the right spot and waiting till they'd pass. And I was confident, okay, we're going to go right after this person and be right in the right spot. And we did. And my wife and I looked at each other like, Oh, this is a big deal. Indeed. Now I, uh, uh, Jim, what are your thoughts? Well, I actually got, uh, 12 3 when I was in Atlanta on a road trip back home. And my very first drive was a 50, 80 mile drive out of Atlanta to a supercharger with my wife sitting next to me. My wife is, she's the one that complains the most when we're in the car about whether or not I'm using it. And she gave that entire experience a big thumbs up. And that's a great endorsement uh, coming from her. Um, it just, was incredibly human-like, smooth in the turns. It's one of my big complaints with V11 that I didn't say was that it's just, when it starts to go, it was just too hesitant. It just, it needed to get up and go. And and V12 almost get up, the get up and go for me is almost too much at times. And um, picking the right speed, the, the automatic um, speed offset, the new automatic uh, setting that you have to let the car pick that seems to be a really interesting feature that was added where the car now just determines based on what's going on around it, how fast it should go. And in the Atlanta area, it was following traffic. It was going over the speed limit. It was going under the speed limit, following traffic. It was just, you know, I found the overall experience to be, we, we, we said, wow, out loud several times on that drive. And, and I've had FSD for a long time and it takes a lot for me to say, wow. The night that I got it, I, I went inside. I said, who wants to go with me? And two of my boys were like, absolutely, let's check this out. And so the first thing we did was plotted a course all over town through all of the usual trouble spots. And the first thing we did notice is it did drive more human-like. It was more natural feeling. And then we went to our trouble spots. And the first one, the big trouble spot that I've had is it tries to make navigation says make an illegal left across a double yellow through two lanes of oncoming traffic because somebody trained it that way in the dark, in the middle of the night when no one was around. Mm -hmm. I've taken that left when no one's around, but I, I would not want my car to do it for me unless there's literally no one around. And it, Put on the blinker, it slowed down, and then it turned off the blinker and just drove past it to the next light. And we all said, wow. Now we tried it again on camera and it tried to turn. So <laughs> there are, <laughs> we're not perfect yet. I, I would say B plus A minus as well for my score. The big thing is you said your wife was the biggest critic. My kids were definitely the biggest critic. They don't mind when I'm in control, but what they're watching is me battling a machine. For, right. for dominance. And it's, uh, it's, it, it was scary. And my youngest said, when you would engage FSD, I would, I would, 
I would pay attention from the back seat watching to make sure we're not about to be in danger. And I don't feel the need to do that anymore. That's a big vote of confidence. Uh, are there problem spots that you've had, Brian, are there problem spots you've had before that it's gotten better on? Yeah, most most of my problem spots are solved. I had there's a a weird road I found in early FSD testing where I was just going around the suburbs anywhere I could. And there's this one road where you take a right turn and then the right lane is a turn only lane so you have to get to the left, then you go through an intersection, then the straight lane is to the right and there's a turn lane to the left. And it would jog between these and you know just had the hardest time and then further on where we would turn, it would keep trying to take every turn lane, like, surely this one's it, surely this one's it. <laughs> and it, it never was, and, you know, frustratingly break out of it. Um, took uh, version 12 there. It nailed the entire thing. It was beautiful, exactly how I would have done it. Um, the only issues I've had on version 12 are... Um, one tricky intersection off of a from one highway to another going into a clover leaf. There's kind of an odd um, the way the exit area is shaped is weird and the lines on the road are a little weird. So had a little trouble figuring out where it needed to go there. Not unsafely, but it was slowing down and there was enough traffic that I took it out there. Had it gone to the left instead of right. Yeah, you know, we just would have gone down the road, taken a, another turn, and been on our way. But um, so that was a disengagement. Um, like you with the filming thing, that's when it it didn't want to work quite right. Uh, I picked up a friend at the Mall of America the other day. I was telling him how great this new version is. Came up to the stoplight and really aggressive stop. It was fine, but we both kind of lunged, and it was like, ah, well. Usually it's really good. So there's still some stuff to, to fix. And obviously, you know, you guys are on further versions or have access to further versions. So you can tell they're kind of tweaking some of that stuff. One thing I have observed is that it feels like some of the ways it behaves are not for humans or for comfort, but for NHTSA compliance. It stops, mm -hmm. in my opinion, much too far back at stop signs because mm -hmm. that's the law. And then it inches forward. So that is annoying. I'd like you to stop like at the, at the actual line, not the painted line, but that's the law and I get it. And there's other behaviors. It does like that. Not running yellow lights. It'll stop a little harder. It's two or three times now really stopped. I, I would have gone if it was a professional driver and I was in the back seat, I wouldn't have cared either way. So go, don't go. I get it. Um, the conservative approach was to stop and it did. Uh, so then the question is, in a lot of past versions, we've seen two steps forward, one step back, one step forward, three steps back. Are there steps back that you've seen, Jim? Um, steps back, maybe a little bit in the way of um, speed control, although that seems to be addressed with 3.3.3. .3 .3. um, and I was also having some issues where the car was maybe not driving exactly in the center of the lane. Now, I'm, I'm nitpicking here. I mean, this is minor stuff, but um, it also seems to be better in 3.3.3. .3 and that's other people have complained about that. And I think Tesla's actually come out and said, yeah, we're, we're addressing those things. But um, by and large, I have often equated to FSD as like playing an instrument um, where in order to get the instrument to perform well, you had to know when to disengage and when to engage and when to flip up on the speed and when to go back on the speed. And you kind of had to almost, it felt like you were finessing FSD to do its thing. With V12, I literally feel like I don't need to drive most of the time. I don't need to do that finessing and it's just doing it. And I'm actually a little fearful for it because I think we're just about, it's it's not full self-driving. It's full self-driving supervised now. Um, I think they've, they've changed the name. So I'm finding myself starting to get a little complacent, especially on roads that I know what it's going to do. And I don't know that that is a very safe thing for me to be doing right now. <laughs> and Brian? 
just one thing i don't know that it's come up necessarily before but uh i just noticed today um we came to an intersection where the the power was out or whatever we had the the flashing red light mm. and it stopped perfectly it was its turn to go it started going then we hit the next you know red flash and it stopped and then it started going again and so I, you know i just i red just like green light yeah red light, i just pushed the accelerator got through it it was fine i didn't take over steering at all just put the accelerator down so i think there's there's still elements like that that need to be worked out. Um, I haven't had a lot of experience, but it also hasn't been amazing in parking lots yet. Um, right. But again, I'm on 12.3, and it sounds like some of those next point releases seem to be doing better in, in those areas. So I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. That is the right phrase to use. So for me, uh, I've never had auto park before. I just got it and uh, no one knew that I had it. And so I said to the boys, hey, do you think that parking spot will, do you think we can park there? Do you think I'll fit? It's like, well, I, I don't know. I'm a kid. So I go, oh, look, and I poked that spot. I poked yes. And away we go. And it was wonderful. Uh, the only problem I've had with auto park was I selected a spot and then halfway into it realized that's a loading zone. I should probably yeah. not park there. Uh, I, I've also got a, a problem spot that's still lingering. There's a no turn on red and it'll pull up. It'll stop and say, looks good to me. No, no, I don't care if it looks good to you. You don't go. That is yep. a disengagement. Uh, but if I am behind another car, that's better. Uh, so I've had people on previous test videos I've done where I've had problems and they say you're using it wrong. And I would argue that I'm not because I consider myself a fairly sophisticated user and understander of it. But like you were saying, Jim, there's a lot of uh, it, it's like playing a, a, an instrument. And this is not if I am struggling to use it correctly, uh, everyone will struggle to use it correctly. And not everyone, obviously, but, but most people. So my question in summary is, you know, we saw how good this worked for people in big cities for whole Mars catalog, for everyone I saw testing it uh, in any major city on the West Coast, it was very impressive. I saw some great drives in Florida, very impressive. Would you now recommend this uh, to people living in smaller towns? Uh, Brian, you go first. Absolutely. Yeah, this is the first one, like Jim was saying, you know, playing it like an instrument where uh, you still have to pay attention. But, you know, my suggestion to people is, as they've tested it out in the past has always been keep your hands on the wheel let it do its thing but when it does something you wouldn't that's when you take over um and then today when we were with family i was talking to a few people about this and i said you know this is the first version where i feel like i could put you in it give you that instruction and having never used it before you would enjoy driving with it jim um, absolutely. I, I, I shudder to say this. I've been saying for a long time, I've never thought the price of FSD was worth what they were charging. And I'm almost ready to say, I think we're getting close. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really, really compelling. And I think I would feel comfortable, um, with very little instruction, turning somebody loose on it and saying, give it a try. And cause you don't have to play that instrument anymore. It's now the Casio keyboard where you press the one button and it just plays the whole song for you, at least most of it. Um, but yeah, the, the first hundred feet and the last hundred feet are on you, but everywhere in between it can almost do just about anything. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. My assessment of version 11 was unless you live in a place where you can test it first, don't even think about it. Um, but now it, I am still hearing, uh, one of my viewers, Lex, is uh, having trouble with it in Colorado, which is a little surprising to me, but I believe him. I have no reason to doubt his experience is valid. So that'll be something to keep an eye on. But these new versions are rolling out so darn quick. In terms of, is it worth the price? And in new areas, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in terms of, is it worth the price? That's not a question any of us can answer. It's up to the individual driver. 
That's up to your budget. If you've got all the money in the world, the answer is don't even think about it. And if you've got no money, the answer is you can't think about it. So right. uh, um, I do have a fun picture to share at the end. But first, I was going to mention uh, all three of us will be at this event in some capacity. The Tesla Owners Club yes. of Michigan, uh, both Brian and Jim will be at the Rockstar Tent. We'll figure out a time for different people to come by and meet your favorites. But we've got some great folks coming. Sandy Monroe, Bradford Ferguson and Matt Smith of Rebellion Air, Bearded Tesla Guy, Dirty Tesla, and most of our lineup. And Kyle's going to be there. We've got a couple people from Europe. We've got uh, Tesla Tino will be there. We've got a really great lineup. Most of these people are, most of the people coming are from the Midwest, of course. Why wouldn't they be? And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And then we have Plaid Day the following day, which is a ticket, which is, a, I think, 20 bucks or something, with all of that money going to charity. And I said to Kelly, you got to keep some of it. And she said, we can't, or we have to pay to use the road. And we don't have the budget. Uh, and that makes sense. The city, you know, you, you're going to hold a paid drag event. And it's not drag racing. It goes one car at a time, but still. So what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Leave it all in the comments. Uh, head over. Follow Iowa Tesla guy. Follow Brian Reby Drives Electric. And uh, just for fun, uh, this is our new dog. Ah. Uh, Isn't she pretty? Cute. She's very yeah, tall. Very pretty dog. That baby gate is not for her. It's for the other dogs. She gracefully bounds over it like a gazelle. Like it's not even there. Uh, and, Fantastic. Uh, and what we do, if we want all the dogs to be able to come and go except Pancake. Pancake is a yellow lab. We just lay it flat and she looks at it and goes, I'm not stepping on that. <laughs> <laughs> Because she's dumb. All right, guys. So uh, thanks for hanging out. And I uh, appreciate uh, you joining me today. And we will have you back very soon because we're about to shoot another one of these because that's just how we do it. Uh, stay tuned. Stay juicy. Can't wait to hear from you clever robots in Michigan on June 15th.